All right, uh, so now we are going to deal with some of the remaining options. So in photo bucket, I've posted for this assignment. And what I want you to post is your sketch in whatever form it is, pencil, pen, and then a basic black cutout logo. It's acceptable if you have white shapes on top of black shapes, because if you do it in vector, sometimes you have to do that. That's what I had to do with the X on the head, right? But, and I, you will get credit for this, but the problem with posting it just this way is when I put it on a different background, it's just black, right? Except for my white shape. So the preferred way to post it is to bring that vector file into PhotoP or Photoshop. To bring it into PhotoP, it needs to be a, um, a PNG that you output from vector, but always save an SVG for yourself. And in Photoshop, using layer styles, you can add an offset. And you can also add a drop shadow if you want to. That's up to you. But that offset makes it so no matter what the background is, it's going to show up. Okay. And the goal is for your logo to be clear, simple, and versatile. That's going to be the, the best work for your portfolio. Now, the way I was able to cut out the X using Photo P was to first rasterize the PNG from vector and then select the white of the X and hit delete. Now, this was coloring it within Photo P, just using gradient later, layer styles. And then if you have Photoshop and Illustrator, you're able to do a little bit more with the vector file. So this is just a clean vector that then the, the offset and the drop shadow is added in Photoshop, but it got to stay a vector. It ne never, never needed to be rasterized, so it made it higher quality. And then this option actually colored it in Illustrator, and so that's why the head is a different color than the ribs, than the water, and added gradations within Illustrator, and then used Photoshop to add the, the offset and the drop shadow. Is there, so I get a question from David, is there a way to add an offset within the vector program? So we've seen how we can add color within the vector program. So the way you can add an offset quite simply is to add a border to everything. So these other options, the shadow, that's a drop shadow, the inset shadow, that's what's called an inner highlight. Neither of those is a full offset, like a stroke. But if you change your border of everything to white, you can get an offset, even though you can't tell here. So I'll have to export it for you to see, right? So you can give a stroke to everything. So what's the problem with that? Well, the things that were already strokes, like my ribs, they get turned to white instead of the green that I wanted. Because within this vector program, I have not yet found a way, it's not readily apparent, how you can turn your strokes into filled paths like you can in Illustrator. Also, remember the problem I had with strokes for the water is I can't get rid of that that seam because I've made that in two parts. So there's that way. But the way I want you to learn to answer your question, David, is to output this as an SVG for yourself, but then also as a PNG, and then bring that PNG into Photo P so that you can add layer style effects to it. Right within Photo P.
So that's the easiest way. And you do that with a stroke. And if you want a soft edged layer style effect, that would be outer glow that you can play with. So here it's yellow, but that makes it so it's easy for you to see. Set it to normal mode. So many settings. Spread it out so you can see it. Put it on gray so you can see it. So if I wanted a soft edged offset, I could use outer glow. If I want a hard edged offset, I use stroke. And if you want a drop shadow, put in a drop shadow. All right. So now we're going to talk about uh, the last thing that you can add, and that's texture. So we're in Photo P now. You, can, you saw how in Illustrator on a vector you could add patterns, but you can't really add texture. So in Photoshop and in Photo P, you can add texture as a layer style effect. So first, let's go back to these effects. Let's give it just a color. Just to remind ourselves. Come on. Hmm. It's not giving me my color options. But I'll pick a blue. There we go. Come on. Oh, close the current window first. You gotta get used to these things. All right, so I've given it a color. Remember, you can also give it a gradient, just like in Photoshop. It's really quite amazing how similar Photo P manages to be to Photoshop. So let's say that's my my image, right? But now I want to add another element, not just a drop shadow, not just an offset, not just a color, not just a gradient, but texture. So if you go to Effects, this will be the same in Photo P and in Photoshop. You'll see at the top you have Bevel and Emboss, Contour, Texture. What I often do is just Texture. But first, let's look at all of them, right? So Bevel and Emboss, you know, to make it clear, let me turn off these others. I'll leave the color on because you kind of need that. Texture doesn't show up that well on, on just black. So bevel and emboss, let's just look at that. Look at its options. I'm going to really exaggerate it. What it does is it, it kind of turns it into a 3D object at the edge. Or the the illusion of one, right? Oh, come on, it was looking good. So you can play with those settings. Decide how much depth you want it to have if you want such an effect. But once you you know that this is an option, you'll see it everywhere in our visual culture, especially on things like book titles and magazines and comic books and, po and movie posters. So if I zoom in on that. There are some drawbacks to it, but it can do a really nice job. So it makes just this simple flat shape look three-dimensional by just lighting it from above and doing what's called an inner highlight and then an inner shadow. But if there's any kind of weirdness, like the overlapping edge I have that was just solid black before, now this is really making that indent more obvious, which is not ideal. Now the other options, contour is basically how bevel and emboss works, right? So contour is the bevel part of bevel and emboss. Texture is the emboss part 
of bevel and emboss. So this is where you can give it a um, an overall texture, like it's cut out of bumpy paper. And you can choose different patterns. Photoshop has different ones than um, Photopea. And once you define it, I'll zoom in. You can see what that does. So that does a good job of kind of softening just flat color. The problem is you can't have texture without some sort of bevel. You can have a bevel without texture, but you can't have texture without a bevel. And that's because in order for it to give you the texture, it needs to have the illusion of depth. So if you don't want a bevel, but you do want some sort of pattern, then you don't use bevel and emboss. Instead, you use pattern overlay. And that will keep it flat, but will give you the ability with the right settings there we go, to put some sort of texture on it. But because it's not lighting mapped on top, you'll have to um, put that texture in on a duplicate layer. So I'm going to hit Control J. This is all within Photo P. But the benefit is now I don't have that seam showing anymore but i still have the texture right but it's like it's just cut out of rough paper so what i did is i made a duplicate of it here and then underneath i'm going to turn the pattern overlay off and turn all the other things on so the color all of that oh i don't want the outer glow that's silly okay and then on the layer above what i'm going to do is right click and say rasterize the layer style. And then I'm going to change it from normal mode to pin light. Come on. There we go. And what that will do, oh, I like what that did to the color. But basically, what that does is it allows you to have the texture on top of whatever you already have. And just because there is, it's not a straight uh, neutral texture, it was one that was yellow, I would have to go into the image adjustments, play with hue saturation. If I didn't want it to affect the color, just add texture, I just take the saturation all the way down. So that's a way you can play with texture and with um, lighting and 3D effects in addition to color. But ultimately, it's all about how, um, how clear your black and white image is. So really quickly, how does that work in Photoshop? It works the exact same way. So if I open up my PSD, Just in the last minute here, I'll do it on a duplicate just so you can see. I can add bevel and emboss to it. I can add texture to it. I can play with the scale of it. Ooh, scale is a good pun for a fish logo. You know, until I kind of like how it looks. And because it's coming from a vector here, it's just perfectly clean. Because this is on an EPS, remember. And I can minim minimize the contour or exaggerate it. I usually minimize it. I could also do a pattern overlay. <laughs> and there are some weird patterns. You know, usually kind of a paper or a sand pattern.